Today, we're going to learn some interview questions about the Visual Studio Debugger. Hey, Rookie, uh, I'm going to put you on uh, Georgia Avenue today, by, down by Silver Spring. Oh, come on, Lieutenant. You told me that you'd give me DuPont Circle. I'm ready for it. Listen, I can't put a rookie on DuPont Circle. You're too close to K Street. Some of those statisticians during the day, it gets crazy. Now, no rookies near K Street. Trust me, this is where you want to be. All right, I'll do it, but I won't like it. You'll enjoy it. So this video is all about the Visual Studio Debugger. Now, personally, I've only encountered one interview question about the Visual Studio Debugger, but it's a big one. And if you don't know the answer to this question, you're not getting a job. Now, if you don't know how to use the debugger, I'm going to teach you how to set a breakpoint and inspect memory. So if you're ever asked that question, you can explain how to do it. And if you already know how to use the debugger, maybe you might learn one or two new tricks. Before we get started, all the code for this is on my GitHub or my website. And as always, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. All of this helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you want, feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn or Twitter. So if you've been using console.writeline to figure out what's been going on inside your code base, have I got some good news for you. Visual Studio actually comes with a debugger that lets you stop the program, rewind, go forward, and even change some values on the fly. And it all starts with these little red dots called breakpoints. So if you ever want to see what's going on inside your program, just go to the left-hand side of the screen and put a big red breakpoint there. Then when you start your program, either by going to debug and start debugging, the program will automatically stop. It'll halt at that breakpoint, and then you can peek inside and see what's going on. Now, when the breakpoint trips, you can do a couple of cool things. Like, for example, I can actually mouse over num1 and num2 and see exactly what's inside of these two things. I can even take this and I can change it to, let's say, three. And now my number is going to be three for the rest of the program. Now, if I want, I can also set up what's called a watch window. Now I can do that by going to debug windows. I go down to watch and I go to watch one. Now I can add these items in here, num1 and num2. And as I step through the program, I'll be able to keep an eye on how those variables are changing inside the watch window. Now you move through by pressing F10 and F11. F10 steps over an item. So once you break, you press F10 and you can move to the next line, essentially stepping over what you're doing. If you want to step into something, press F11. This will actually step you into the method that you're looking at so that way you can look around and see what's going on. Now, if you ever forget F10 or F11, just go to the debug menu and you'll find it right here. Step into is F11, step over is F10. Now, this little yellow arrow here is called the location arrow, and here's what's kind of neat about it. You can actually grab it and drag this arrow up or drag that arrow back down again. Now, dragging this arrow is actually really useful if you're pressing F10, pressing F10, pressing F10, and you overshoot something you wanted to look at. You can actually grab that arrow and drag it back, almost as if you're traveling back in time. Word of warning, though, dragging it back or forward doesn't actually undo or execute any code. So if you were expecting some kind of result, you might get some really weird bugs. But knowing that you can drag that arrow back is really useful if you overshoot something and need to see what you did again. 
Now, here's another neat thing about breakpoints. I can actually make them conditional. So I have this method here uh, that detects to see if you're sending it a perfect number. And a perfect number is a number that's the sum of its divisors. So six is a perfect number because one, two, and three all add up to six and can all be divided into six. Okay, let's create a conditional breakpoint that will only break when it sees the number six. So by the for loop, I'm gonna create a breakpoint. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna go down to conditions. Now down here, I'm gonna say, okay, uh, when number equals six, I want you to break. So that looks good, I'm gonna hit close. Now over here in my program, I'm gonna try this with the number four and this should not break. And the program runs and we didn't hit the break point. Now I'm gonna change this to the number six. And I'm gonna restart this. And as you can see, when number is six, this breaks. Okay, but let's say you want to break on the 50th number or you want to break on every 100th iteration in a for loop. Well, you can do that too. Just create a breakpoint and right click and go down to conditions. And instead of conditional expression, choose hit count. And then you can make the hit count equal to, let's say 50, or you can have a multiple of 100 and break every 100th for loop iteration. Okay, let's say you spent all this time setting up your breakpoints and you don't want to delete them when you run your program to check to see if everything's okay. So you can disable them. In order to do that, just right click on the breakpoint and check disable. None of those breakpoints will be hit. And you can also manage your breakpoints by going to debug windows and breakpoints and that'll bring up the breakpoint window and you can enable them or disable them at will from the breakpoint window. Now a big program might have hundreds of breakpoints, so it might be useful to know what these things do. So you can use this label column and just right click on the breakpoint, go down to edit labels, and then type in a new label, like in this case, say perfect number. Click add, and now, and now you can label every breakpoint that's in perfect number, that way you can find it quickly. Now here's something that's really cool. If you've ever had to send something to the console or send something to the log because you need to see what was going on inside of a program, you can actually do that with special breakpoints called actions. So let's say here I have my perfect number code. I'm gonna create a breakpoint, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go down to actions. Under actions, I'm going to give it something here. I'm gonna say the function and I'm gonna tell it to uh, write out the evaluated number. Now, now when I run the program, my output window shows me the method where this happened and which number was being evaluated all the way up to when it breaks. And this is super useful because now you're not putting debug information out into something that could go into production. Now remember at the beginning where I said there's one debugger interview question that would prevent you from getting hired? Well, this is it. What process do you attach to when you want to debug a web application? <laughs> So the answer to that is w3wp.exe. If you're gonna be doing any kind of web programming, please remember what I just said. Attach to w3wp.exe. This is the IS worker process that handles all the requests that come in. Now you can actually attach to an IS process that's running on your computer or even a remote computer, assuming you have the permissions. In order to do that, just go to debug, select attach to process, now down here, choose show processes from all users. Once you do that, you can go to your connection target. You can choose a, your local connection target, a foreign connection target, but go all the way down in your slide bar and you'll find it right here, w3wp.exe and just hit attach. And assuming your code is the same, you'll be able to debug something even though it's on a remote server. Again, if you're going for any kind of web development job, please remember how to do this before you go into an interview. So to wrap things up, you can use breakpoints on the debugger to see what's going on in your code and even step through it. You can also use the debugger to change variables on the fly. The debugger allows you to set conditional and hit-based breakpoints that only trip when certain conditions are met. And you can use actions to write out information. That way you can see what's going on inside of your program through the output window. Good luck on your next interview. All right, now hold on guys, hold on. I got one more to the rookie for making his first save today. Hit, 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 hooray! You know, rookie, a lot of developers, they don't know how to use the debugger and they just start drowning. You did a good job today teaching them how to use that thing. Help, 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 help! Somebody dropped the production database, bro! Now hold on.
on guys, I think this sounds like a DevOps problem. <laughs>